Hi, I'm Lisa Tipton, director of the New York Yusufany Chamber Music Program. Hello, my name is Tyler Thomas, assistant director of the Chamber Music Program. Hi, I'm Keith Bonner, Chamber Music Program coach and flutist with the Borealis Wind Quintet. This is the sixth video in the series featuring the extraordinary chamber music of underrepresented composers. Today, we will share the stories and short musical examples of composers in the LGBTQ community. We are featuring composers Jennifer Higdon, Carolyn Shaw, David Del Tredici, Julius Eastman, Miguel de Laguila, and Angela Morley. There have been many famous mainstream composers that have been gay. Most of them have been white and male, including Tchaikovsky, Ravel, Chopin, Barber, Copeland, and many more. This video will break the mold by featuring six composers from a variety of human perspectives, one of which is Jennifer Higdon, a famous, influential mainstream composer. Miguel de Aguila was born in Uruguay, but fled Uruguay's repressive military government and moved to California in the 1970s. Miguel began his musical life studying various instruments. His father, a violinist, passed on his love of music to his son. After briefly studying clarinet and violin, he studied piano with the intention of becoming a concert pianist. He received musical training at the conservatories of San Francisco and Vienna. He is a three-time Grammy-nominated American composer and is among the most highly regarded composers of his generation, with over 120 works that couple drama and a driving rhythm with nostalgic nods to his South American roots. His multicultural background gives his works an international appeal and a presence with worldwide performances. Miguel is not one to adhere to any school of musical thought, but you can hear in his music echoes of Stravinsky and Gershwin, and even a touch of a minimalist drive train. Have a listen to some of his music. <laughs> Prize and Grammy winner Jennifer Higdon is one of the most prolific composers of the 21st century. She was born in Brooklyn but spent her youth in Georgia and Tennessee. Her father was a painter who exposed his children to different types of art. Higdon developed an interest in photography and writing at an early age but received very little exposure to classical music. She played flute in her high school's concert band but because of her lack of formal training Higdon struggled to catch up early in her college career. During t her time at Bowling Green, she wrote her first composition. Her musical style grew out of listening to the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and Simon and Garfunkel as a youth. And as a result, she has described her own compositional process as intuitive and instinctive, with images of nature that George Crumb encouraged her to use as her muse. She demonstrated dedication by persevering despite several graduate rejection letters and obtained a PhD in composition from the University of Pennsylvania and an artist diploma from the Curtis Institute of Music. She teaches composition at Curtis and lives with her wife in Philadelphia. Have a listen. Pulitzer Prize winning composer David Del Tredici's composition career spans decades with a large body of work focusing on his identity as a gay man. Del Tredici is a leading figure of the neo-romantic movement and much of his career he has also been associated with Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, the inspirational source for a series of large compositions. Much of Del Tredici's popular compositions are cast in a melodic tonal style. Del Tredici is also a talented pianist and has served as one of the finest composition teachers of his time, 
with students including John Adams and Tyson Street. Del Tredici was born in Cloverdale, California, and was an accomplished pianist in his teens, debuting with the San Francisco Symphony at 17. Del Tredici studied at Princeton with Roger Sessions and Earl Kim. He is on the faculty at City University of New York, where he has taught composition since 1984. Many of his works focus on the joy of relationships. His recent work, Bully Side, deals with gay teen suicide as a result of bullying. Julius Eastman was an African-American composer, pianist, vocalist, and dancer. He was among one of the first composers to combine minimalism with elements of pop music. He often gave his pieces provocative titles. Eastman grew up in Ithaca, New York, where he began studying piano. He studied at Ithaca College and then went on to Curtis. Eastman's Martin Luther King's hymn of Mighty Fortress is Our God and Stay On It were two of his most influential compositions. In 1970, Eastman joined the Center for the Creative and Performing Arts at SUNY Buffalo, but soon became disheartened by the lack of professional opportunities. Eastman grew increasingly dependent on alcohol and drugs, and his life soon fell apart. At one point, he was evicted from his apartment in New York City. His belongings, including scores and his music, were confiscated by the sheriff, and he was forced to live in Thompson Square Park in the East Village. Despite a temporary attempt at a comeback, he died alone in a hospital in Buffalo of cardiac arrest. He had descended so far from the public eye that no public notice was given until an obituary was printed eight months after his death. Take a listen to some of his music. <laughs> a New York-based musician, is a vocalist, violinist, composer, and producer. Shaw grew up in North Carolina, where she began playing violin at two with her mother as her teacher and began composing at 10. She graduated from Rice and Yale in violin performance and received her PhD in composition at Princeton. She was the youngest recipient of the Pulitzer Prize for Music in 2013 for Partita for Eight Voices, written for the Grammy-winning Roomful of Teeth, of which she is a member. She performs on the violin with the American Contemporary Music Ensemble and regularly works with Alarm Will Sound. She currently teaches at NYU and is a creative associate at Juilliard. Along with performing and composing, Shaw has worked with several prominent artists from the pop world, including Kanye West, Nas, and The National. She gravitates to performers who don't want details on every note, which she hopes gives freedom for expression informed by the rest of the music. Shaw loves the color yellow, otters, Beethoven Opus 74, Mozart Opera, Kinhaven, The Smell of Rosemary, and The Sound of a Mandolin. Angela Morley was an English composer and conductor who became a familiar household name to the BBC radio listeners in the 1950s. She attributed her entry into composition and arranging largely to the influence and encouragement of the Canadian composer Robert Farden. Morley transitioned in 1972 and lived openly as a transgender woman. Later in life, she moved to Scottsdale, Arizona. Morley won three Emmy Awards for her work in music arrangement 
and also received eight Emmy nominations for composing music for television series such as Dynasty and Dallas. She was twice nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song Score, first for The Little Prince in 1974, and the second for The Slipper and the Rose in 1976. She was the first openly transgender person to be nominated for an Academy Award. She did not co compose a lot of music available for chamber music. However, a lot of her beautiful string ensemble music can be downsized and played by smaller groups. So take a listen to some of her music. Check out at the bottom of the video, you will find links to entire movements as well as other works by each of the composers. And for our next session video, we will highlight Indigenous American composers.